A Simple Story of Carbon For most of the last 800,000 years, carbon had a quiet life. Plants and animals lived pretty much in balance, with plants taking in as much carbon dioxide as animals put out. The plants took in carbon dioxide and made carbohydrates, you know, carbs, sugars, starches, cellulose, and other things too. Then the animals ate the plants and released carbon dioxide. It came out pretty even. But about 15,000 years ago, carbon's lifestyle changed. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere started to increase. It most probably started to increase because 15,000 years ago, human beings invented the goat. Well, okay, we didn't invent the goat. It's been around for longer than we have. We just domesticated it and protected it, and the number of goats grew and grew. The goats did what goats do, which is to eat just about anything that isn't moving. What they ate was forest undergrowth. What happens when you eat the forest undergrowth is that you eat all the young trees. And with no young trees, no forest. That's called deforestation. And when the forest is gone, the land dries out, and that's called desertification. We invented other things too, like settled agriculture and the village. This meant more deforestation, and fewer trees and other plants meant less carbon dioxide being taken out. So, for the last 15,000 years, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has been increasing at a steady rate. But carbon's lifestyle changed again. About 200 years ago, we invented more things. Things like the Industrial Revolution and the coal mine and the combine. The combine allows more land to be farmed cheaply and requires more trees to be cut down. The coal mine means that we released and are releasing huge amounts of carbon that had been taken out of the equation millions of years ago. Oh yes, we also invented the automobile and refineries and freeways. Nothing grows on concrete and asphalt actually releases carbon dioxide. Gasoline burns pretty much into just carbon dioxide and water and the automobile allows us to abuse and enjoy ever more distant landscapes. The rate of increase went up, and as the rest of the world joins Europe and North America in the Industrial Revolution, the rate of increase is itself increasing every year. And what's the result of all this carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Global warming. And unless someone really wants to be able to swim to the North Pole in the next couple of years, we're in trouble. So what do we do? What can we do? We've got too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. What can we do? We could junk our cars and walk to work. We could replace all coal-fueled power plants with nuclear. We could bubble the atmosphere through the oceans. None of these things are going to be done. They're too sweaty, or too expensive, or too scary, or too risky. We could all convert to ethanol. We could all use better light bulbs. We could all ride bicycles and walk more. We could all pull the plugs on our idle battery chargers. Things are being done by a relatively few people in a relatively few places. And besides, even if everyone did all of that, it would only slow the rate of growth of the increase. It wouldn't reverse the rate of increase. There would still be more and more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So what can we do? We could pay at the pump, literally. We could pay for the guarantee that for each pound of gasoline we burn, there is a section of the earth and the vegetation it supports and dedicated to pulling that pound of gasoline's worth of carbon dioxide back out of the atmosphere. And the same can be done with that pound of coal or natural gas. And that's about 80% of our carbon dioxide problem. The open ocean can take care of the other 20% and more. So much more it will begin to draw down some of that extra carbon put up over the last 17,000 years. 
begin this drawdown, we are proposing that California's economy become carbon neutral. To see a more detailed description, go to the website on the screen. Thank you for listening.